Hi everyone, how's everyone doing? So this video will be quite short because I've only watched three tennis matches today. Um, I think there was a few more, I've um, seen the results. I'm, I feel tired, <laughs> I feel tired because there were long matches. I don't know why, um, when I was watching tennis from morning till night and there were loads of matches, I didn't feel, I think it's because there were so like long, there are three hour matches, um, in fact, five sets and stuff. But anyway, before we start, I'm gonna quickly give you five Wimbledon facts. You can probably Google these. In fact, there's seven facts. So 56 million pounds is made every year at Wimbledon. So that's a lot of money. So to me, I think they should be able to put more roofs on the um, other courts because they've got a roof on court one and centre court, but because it was raining all day today, it's been raining. In fact, they said it's been one of the wettest Wimbledons ever. They've not been able to play as much tennis. So with that much money, 56 million, they should be able to afford more roofs for the other courts. Over 50,000 plants are supplied every year to Wimbledon. That's a lot of plants. The record price for a seat at a Wimbledon match, um, probably a final centre court, was £145,500. So that was probably obviously by a celebrity. Um, but yeah, it just says that's the record for someone that paid that much to watch a Wimbledon match. You can't wear, you can wear jeans at Wimbledon, but you can't wear ripped jeans. Now this is funny because I remember, this is my fact, when Meghan Markle, uh, when she was like the princess, um, Duchess of uh, yeah Cambridge, whatever, it, I can't remember, it, yeah, whatever uh, uh, official title was, she went to Wimbledon for the first time tried to sit in the royal box and she was wearing jeans and she was refused and she was really like angry and stuff but she didn't realize it's protocol you can't go in the royal box wearing jeans but um, everyone else can wear jeans but you're not allowed rich jeans which is a bit weird but yeah the fifth fact is Wimbledon has 18 grass courts 20 practice courts so the 18 are the championship courts 20 practice courts eight clay courts and five indoor courts they don't have a court number 13 because of superstition. Each year, 54,250 tennis balls are used every year. And the first um, tournament was held in 1877. So Wimbledon is the oldest tennis tournament in the world. So they're just some facts. You probably didn't want to hear all of them, but you know, just to pass a bit of time. So. As I've said, the result that just came in, which I did not watch any of that match at all because I was working, and that was um, pa Paulini, I don't remember what her first name is, versus Emma Navarro and Paulini um, won. I think I saw it when it said that Navarro had took the first set. Emma Navarro is from um, America and Paulini is obviously um, Italian. So um, she's won, she won it. And I think um, she's one to watch. I said that already, that she's a really good player. So you never know what's gonna happen. The way that Wimbledon is going this year, anyone, it's open for anyone. The two really long matches, in fact, there was three, three matches, sorry. Lulu Sun from New Zealand. She's the one that beat Emmett Raducanu. She played Donna Vekic from Croatia. Um, she took the first set, Lulu did, within an hour. Then the second set, Vekic drew level at 2-2. It was fairly interesting. It wasn't interesting enough for me to keep watching. My hair's all over the place. Um, I turned over because it was kind of, it was just like, it was just going along, but it wasn't that interesting. But then when I turned back over, um, I switched back when it was third set. Vec Vekic was up by five, five games to one. She ended up winning the match and she was, oh, I did feel sorry for her because she was like exhausted. She was like tearful. She's been, has been through quite a lot and she was like very emotional and she literally looked like she needed a good sleep. She said she was exhausted and I did feel for her because I suppose when you want something badly and every year it keeps escaping you because of injury and whatever. And she did it and you could tell that she really wanted it. She put her heart and soul into it. Um, it said that she's been in 43 Grand Slams, 43. And this is the third time, first time she's ever made it to the semi-final at Wimbledon. So it was a big, big deal. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing like her next match and what she's going to do. Then the other two big games, which you can watch Wimbledon today because it's early today. <laughs> it's, it's on next. So, um, you know, it's not a late one. Was Medved, oh, hopefully I've pronounced his name wrong, right, versus Sinner. So that was that. This was a match that was never going to end. I was, I was switching over, switching back, doing the washing up 
doing all sorts, working, and this game was still going on and on and on and on. It ended up being, in the end, I think something like three and a half hours. It was a very long, in fact, no, I think it ended up being almost four hours. It went to five sets. Um, it was really, it, it, you know, it was a, it was definitely a, a one of those matches. It's going to be memorable. Um, they'd said here, I've just put here, I've took too many notes, so I'm not going to go through them all, but um, Sinner, some of the stats, he had 92% first serves points won. Now that is high. 92% of his first serves, he was winning points on them. Now that is a high statistic. He also had 9.4 for his um, forehand quality. So if you think about how high that is compared to Medvedev, who was 8.4. So he's literally nearly at 10, his, quality, his, his forehand quality is nearly perfect. Um, the rallies were really, you, it was going back and forth. I know there was a medical break in between because um, Sinner, I think, um, injured himself, went off, got medical treatment. But yeah, it was. It started slow, but it just sped up and it just kept going on and on and on. And on. I, was getting, I was thinking, is this game going to ever end? Um, it's one of the longest uh, matches I think they were saying that's been played. Normally they don't go to fifth sets at this um, stage. But yeah, um, Medvedev won in the end, um, which was still a big, sh not a shock, it wasn't a shock because he was playing well, but he has taken out the um, top seed, the number one player in the world, um, Sinner, has been taken out. Um, and then Alcaraz versus Deepal. Now, one thing I will say about this Alcaraz match, it was so biased. I hate when I'm watching um, any sports where the commentators are completely biased against one person. They've said about a thousand times today in every reel, in every interview, and in every um, comment, he's 21, he's 21. Oh he's, oh, he's a gift to the game. He's, you know, they're bigging him up so much. And yeah, he's a fantastic player, right? I'm not going to say he's not, but I just don't like when they're that biased. I mean, they're just going, aren't you hype? They're overhyping him up. And he is good, but Djokovic has won lots of Wimbledons. They don't talk about him like that. Sinner is number one player in the world. So obviously, Carlos Alcaraz isn't number one in the world but they're not talking about sinner like that it's just they're just going over the top with it it's like it's getting cheesy <laughs> it's getting cheesy now and i know lots of people like him i like him i don't mind him but i think you, i don't think you should pile on you shouldn't be that biased because it's not fair on tommy paul because the fact is it could have gone either way you know it was a good match um, but they were saying things like Tommy Paul's not the type that is the type of person to go fishing instead of going to a bar. They were just throwing lots of shade at him, and that's not fair. Um, it just went on and on and on. Another match that just went on and on. I think it ended up with you know I took notes, but I can't even remember what notes I took for these because the, it was just too long. Another one that I kept switching back and forth. They were both powerful hitters. Um, you know, it just it there was lots of chances for Tommy Paul to win because he took the first set. No one was expecting that. Um, it then kept going and going. I think he just made too many mistakes. I don't know if it was, oh, well, it wasn't just that. Obviously, Alcaraz Al was playing his best. That is probably the most interesting game I've watched of um, Alcaraz because I'm being honest, I don't find these games that interesting. That's just me. I've just, I don't, I've not, I've not sat through a full um, tennis match of his, um, but he is brilliant and he does do the shots and he does, he, you know, he deserves some praise, but I just think they were going over the top. So let me know what you guys think. Did you watch any of the matches today? It's getting down to the final stages. Tomorrow, there's only a few games as well. Then obviously um, the finals will be on Saturday and Sunday, and then that will be it. It'll be a whole another year till we see another Wimbledon tournament. So yeah, I'll continue to do these updates. Um, and yeah, let me know if you've watched any games today and leave your comments. Thanks for watching, bye.